y'all. Welcome back. After some phenomenal sailing and exploring countless islands over the course of the last three months, I'd now made it to Georgetown, a destination I'd been hearing endless cruisers discuss. Many Americans never go further than Georgetown. After hurricane season ends, they make their way here where they stay until the new season begins, at which time they return to the States. While this isn't my final destination and I don't plan to return to the States, I did plan an extended stay to enjoy all that it has to offer. After completing the windlass repair, it was now my turn to see for myself what this Disney World of the Bahamas was all about. So join me on this wonderful adventure. And don't forget to live your dream. So I'm Amy, a Midwestern Canton girl, and this is my boat, Maritopia. After moving to Florida in 2020, buying a $5,000 Facebook Marketplace worn out 1973 Pearson sailboat and spending two years endlessly working on her, I quit my job and have started my solo sailing adventures with the goal to truly immerse myself into as many different cultures as possible. I hope you're able to enjoy the videos as much as I do living the experiences. This is Chat and Chill, probably the most popular Georgetown staple among cruisers. As you'll soon see, the activities are endless. And throughout my time in Georgetown, I would make many trips over here. Bueno! <laughs> oh, tough girl. <laughs> After finishing the windlass repairs, first things first, I needed a drink. Hey, I'm on. Uh, collect, please. Welcome. Yes, sir. Right. And that plate of food right there. Me? All right. The kids are playing their games. They have a jam session over there, all the musicians. People just chilling. Restaurants over there, more kids over here playing. Good times. Everybody just pulls their dinghy up on the beach. Comes to chat and chill. After a few drinks and familiarizing myself with this little island, I would join in for what would be the first of countless volleyball games. Amy, take off your shirt. Say that this wasn't competitive would be a massive understatement. With nine people per team and being able to hit the ball as many times as possible, it was pure joy. People from all around the globe Countless different languages spoken, all coming together without a care in the world. As the sun got lower in the sky, the party was just heating up. All ages, all nationalities, all coming together to have fun and celebrate life. As cruisers came and went, the faces changed. But as I would soon learn, this was an almost daily occurrence. <laughs> This may appear inconspicuous, the little lady in the middle is in her 80s. Her and her husband have been coming to the Bahamas for more than 30 years. She has dementia and doesn't always remember everything. She was such a sweetheart who I feel fortunate to have been able to dance with. It's times like these that remind me that I'm doing the right thing by fully, honestly, and thoroughly living my own life. With the night coming to a close, it was time to head back to the boat. Boats are just endless. It's like a freaking city because there's so many mass lights. It's cool in the video though, they're all different colors. It's like the Starry Night painting. We're in roughly <clears throat> 10, 12 feet of water. Looks like the dinghy painter lines are just floating there. 
Heck, it looks like the dinghy is just floating there. And you can see the divots in the sand. I mean, just plain as day, you can see it. The <laughs> That's, that's mind-blowing, the, the clarity of the water. And with that, it was time for some sleep. Every morning on the radio, there's what's called the cruiser's net. It's communications between cruisers with things like news of the daily events, items for sale amongst cruisers, and local business news. And if you haven't seen it, it's worth coming and raking and scraping. Trout got to the Bahamas. He brought, brought me a few things. Uh, one is which was the water hose so that I could hook my deck wash up. So I finally got the pump hooked up right there. And I also installed uh, its own breaker for the deck wash pump. I don't have a label for it yet. Uh, it's not a big deal, but uh, I put it on its own separate breaker. Teed it into the uh, the drink water, uh, fresh water line. So it works pretty good. So now that I've got that, now all that, uh, the gunk, I can go hook the hose up and wash that off. I'd only done laundry once since leaving the States, and that was by hand on the boat. Georgetown is a decent sized little city with far more amenities than most of the Bahamas, so it was super convenient being able to do two full loads in an actual washer and dryer. These machines might look and be very old, but they sure did a lot better than I can do by hand. Before heading back over to Chat and Chill for another day of fun, first we'd get a few drinks in Georgetown proper. I'm not sure what to do. Yeah, I'm so busy. I know, right? My schedule is so full. Oh, jeez. Liar! One meeting after another. Yeah. It may have not been much good, and no one really cared, as it was all about fun. But the one thing that was yelled more than anything else had nothing to do with volleyball itself. Heads up. Watch the beer. Oh! <laughs> 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 After every game, we would all shake hands, grab a drink, or five, then end up on a different, purely random team for another game. right at the end of what's called the cruiser's regatta where there are all sorts of fun activities going on of course racing boats uh, removing the motor from dinghies and chasing coconuts softball and on and on it's all done as a way for the cruisers to raise money to donate to their beloved city of georgetown this evening i got to join in on the closing award ceremony the last competition of the regatta was the conch blowing contest where there were different sections for the men's women's and children 
or should I say child. Almost every night in Georgetown, we're spoiled with what looks like a painting in the sky. I hadn't cleaned the bottom of my boat since leaving Gulfport, so in the morning, Trout would come over to help make it a fast job. But that was very quickly interrupted by one of my most favorite underwater experiences I've ever had. Out of nowhere, a very friendly dolphin appeared, and it hung around almost playing with us for about an hour. What a treat this was. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right With you and I the future is bright Just like that, as fast as it had appeared, it was done playing and was headed back into the abyss. With it being Trout's birthday, we took the dinghies to a secluded beach for the day where we would do a bunch of snorkeling and, well, drinking. All in the name of celebrating his special day. Welcome to paradise, man. Yeah, I'm on. Yeah. Got great friends. That's Trout's birthday. Cheers. Happy birthday, dude. So now that I'm in Georgetown, I went in uh, to one of the marine stores, but uh, I am extremely happy to have this much lighter 15 horsepower two stroke. Uh, my old engine was a uh, Mercury 20 horsepower four stroke that weighed 117 pounds. Uh, two strokes, given their nature, are much lighter. There's far fewer components. Uh, so this engine only weighs 82 pounds. Uh, so it's much lighter. Can't buy a new two stroke in the US anymore. I'm not sure when that changed, but uh, due to emissions, uh, the US outlawed them some time ago. Uh, so now that I'm here, I've got this. I am extremely happy to be able to not have to take this on and off. And I can now lift the dinghy with the davits. Let's go look at the new pulley system I installed purposely to pull the dinghy up. So I've got different, uh, uh, different block and uh, purchase setup installed now. So, now that I'm going to start lifting the dinghy, I put these on. These used to rotate. I had these on before and they used to rotate at that joint. Uh, I took them in and had them welded uh, in place. The top and bottom welded so that they can't rotate. Uh, because it just, it, it would make the line chafe right here. And now that they're welded in place, uh, they can't. And I marked them before I took them into the welder. Anyway, this is, there's three pulleys on top, three pulleys on bottom. Uh, 
the line is not fixed to the load. The line is, is affixed to the fixed point that doesn't move. Uh, so there's three, six. So this is a six to one setup. So if I'm pulling uh, 100 pounds with this, if I'm pulling 100 pounds, divide that by six, and that's when I'm pulling this line, that's the weight that it will feel like I'm pulling. Uh, whereas the old system only had two blocks up here and two blocks at the bottom. It was also spliced at the fixed point, but it was only a four to one. So it was a four purchase system where this is a six purchase system. Uh, I'm extremely happy with that. I'll show you how I rigged the starboard side, which is where the engine on the dinghy will be, uh, the heavier side. Uh, I've rigged it so that I can use the winch uh, to winch the heavier side of the dinghy up if necessary. So when I'm picking the dinghy up, when I'm picking the dinghy up to get underway, I will unhook this from both sides to the swim platform this will hook around uh, blocking the dinghy, uh, just like the port side one. Uh, then I rotate the swim platform up, and how I've got this rigged with the six purchase system, the side is welded in place too. Comes back here, and that's just a jam cleat. If I need to, that's just a jam cleat if I need to cleat it in place in a hurry. I've rigged this pulley on with Dyneema. I've just used a wire tie to tie the loose ends up. Uh, Dyneema can be pretty slippery, uh, but Dyneema line has an exorbitant amount of strength compared to regular rope. But anyway, it comes from the, the top pulleys over around this pulley down then I've mounted another pulley right here I've attached it with a bolt through the hard top frame and this pulley so it comes around this pulley forward to the winch wrap it around this is a self tailing winch and if I absolutely need to I can crank it up with this winch handle. So you can see. It's probably hard to tell because it's going really slow, but as I crank this handle, it's pulling the swim platform up. So that is what will lift the dinghy when I am ready to go. Now that I have that uh, much lighter outboard. So when the swim platform is down uh, and that that line is not needed I just pull it out of the lower pulley and the upper pulley and just tie it around the, the cleat right here uh, just so it's out of the way so on top of having on top of having the six purchase block systems there now when I run this line through the pulleys and bring it up to this winch. This winch is a 44. Uh, so this winch applies 44 times the amount of pressure uh, or strength, if you will, that I would put in. So if I'm pushing at 10 pounds, uh, multiply that times 44, and uh, I'm pushing 440 pounds. Uh, so it, it raising the dinghy with this new setup should be extremely easy. So tonight we're at a thing called the fish fry. A lot of the Bahamas have them. It's just a bunch of restaurants that uh, are in the exact same spot and they all serve. So you can pick, I think here there's about oh, 15 restaurants. Uh, so you can pick where you want to eat. Uh, it's pretty cool. Here's the beach at the fish fry. And it is all made out of, well, there's some trash mixed in here. But uh, 
It's all conch. All of those are conch shells. Bahamians love their conch. And there's the dinghy dock right on the, or the beach, so you can bring your dinghy right up to the restaurants. I love all the different colored buildings. Yeah, the color of buildings are just so cool. It's not like in America where every house is a bland brown or cream color. They have vibrant colored everything. Some of the places aren't open tonight, uh, but it is pretty early. And where I'm eating is the Krusty Krab. Where's all my SpongeBob SquarePants lovers? The Krusty Krab. More restaurants way down there. But yeah, there's probably, I don't know, 15 restaurants that are open tonight. All serve a variety of food. Oh, this place is picking up now. I guess I just got here too early. Or you could say at the right time, because now there are a ton of people at the old Krusty Krab. He's making ceviche, a Bahamian staple most often made with conch. My mouth was watering just watching him. With the night getting later, it was obvious to see that the locals were showing up in full force. Most of the ladies were dressed to the nines, with this particular place being a completely packed dance club. If you'd like to stay up to date and follow along with the adventures, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Next week, we'll get out of Georgetown for a bit, sailing to an uninhabited island, which also happens to be the most southern in the Exuma Island chain. I also end up catching my first fish with a hook and lion while sailing. Then we'll head over to Long Island for a few days to do some spear fishing. After being in Georgetown for an extended time, it was really nice to get away for a bit. 